It is All Hallows' Eve, or near it, and the witching hour is at hand, and thus the land becomes filled with many an Aaron Stan. <laughs> hey, it's Romania Black, and I, I realize that maybe I need to be more open-minded about Aaron as we go into these final volumes. <laughs> maybe, maybe not, but... We are on volume 28 of Attack on Titan. We're getting, we're getting down to the wire. We have like a month to go. We have 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. After this, we'll have about like four weeks left of, <laughs> of manga until the anime concludes. And then we conclude the, the manga after that. I've talked to some people on Discord and they were like, no, you need to get to volume 32, finish volume 32, watch the rest of the anime, and then conclude with volumes 33 and 34. And I was like... Fair. That seems like a fair route to go on. I am. I appreciate that. That that sounds fine to me. <laughs> so yes, yeah, I, I feel fine with that. Um, but yeah, I just whoa, I I get it, the the dauntingness is starting to creep in because I'm like, oh, I have a month left of manga and then the anime and stuff, and then if I do a recap over the entire damn series, huh, what I will probably end up doing is after I finish the manga, which will probably be the very first part of December, I will probably spend a lot of December working on the working on the giant overall recap. I don't think I have it in me to make it as long as I've made other recaps, but you know what? We might be pleasantly surprised. You know, I say that and then I'm like, oh God, what if we go through everything and it's just like this big massive ordeal. I will, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. It might take me like a month to put that sucker together. Ha! But yeah. And that may be a big long jaunt, but we've we still have lots of time before that. But it just it hit me today, and I was like, "Oh wow, we're getting close." <laughs> I thought I had more time. So, but anyway, I've got some comments I want to talk about. But I, I've been very harsh against Aaron the last few weeks. I realize, but I I just didn't like Aaron at this point in the story and the manga. I was like, well, when I read the manga, it will make me like Aaron more, and it has. It's made me like Aaron more as a character. And then right up till we got to this part, and then I'm like, nope, I'm back in the same boat I was before. <laughs> but I feel like I understand Aaron's character better. That, that's my problem. I understand where Aaron is coming from. I get what he's doing and why he is doing it. I just don't like what he's doing. And so <laughs> there's a distinction there, right? There's a distinction. We're going to talk about this damn cover in a minute because I have issues with it, but we'll get to that. Um, I do have some comments that pertain to Aaron, though, that I do want to get out of the way before we start this volume just so we're clear um rise and cloud as well as viper leone navarre they, their comments kind of complemented each other so i kind of mushed them together here um they talked about aaron and reiner back in volume 25 and the fact that aaron was like reiner and that he wanted judgment he wanted someone to look at him and judge him for what he had done which is very similar to what reiner wanted right so that's how they were very similar and aaron acknowledges this is from their comments Aaron acknowledges that he, like Reiner, is selfish and is doing something wrong. Aaron knows he's doing something wrong. When he confronted Hanji last volume, he was like, tell me any other options I got. If you've got them, let's hear them. Because he knows what he's doing is wrong. But, and Reiner, it's like Reiner wanted to be a hero. And that lead to the whole thing with Shigen Sheena. And Aaron wants to save his friends, but is sacrificing the world to do so. They both were aware that they were doing things that wasn't right, but they were doing them for their own selfish reasons. And that's why Aaron kind of connects with Reiner and feels this kind of like kindred spirit between him and Reiner, because they have a choice. They have a clear choice of what to do. Reiner could have agreed with Annie and went back to Marley after they lost Marcel and been like, nope, we're going to cancel the mission and go. But Reiner pushed forward, not knowing what was ahead of them because he knew that it was something he had to do. Aaron is pushing forward despite not knowing where it's going to lead him because he believes that that's what he needs to do. So they're very similar in that regards. Even if it leads them to hell, they're willing to move forward. The big difference, though, and Aaron doesn't realize this difference. This is the thing. We as the audience kind of have the advantage of being privy to everything that we see with these characters. And we spent a good amount of time with Reiner that Aaron has not spent with Reiner and gotten to know inside Reiner's psyche. And so even though Aaron gets to see that breakdown that Reiner has in front of him, even though he gets to see it and probably is thinking that Reiner's going through the same mental hurdles that Aaron is. What Aaron doesn't realize 
is that Reiner has come to this realization that what he has done is bad and he regrets it and he wants to work to change that future. Aaron is not in that same boat. Nope. Aaron, and plus, we talked about this previous volumes, when Reiner made all these bad choices, he was a child, was not a fully functional, mature, wise adult that knew what the hell they were doing. And Aaron is that. They're moving forward anyway, despite it. So I liked the way that Rise and Cloud was like, I can judge Aaron a little bit more harshly because he's a freaking adult making these choices, not a child. And I agree. I, I think that I, I feel like it's it's relevant and valid that we judge Aaron a little bit harsher than Reiner because Reiner was a kid. Circumstances were different. But Aaron is a full-blown adult that knows the consequences of their actions and is still choosing to do it either, despite despite the environmental dangers that are occurring. I almost wish that Willie Tiber had been like, in his speech, been like, and if the rumbling were to happen, it would destroy the ecosystem and destroy parody anyway. <laughs> like, maybe Aaron would have been like, oh, shit. <laughs> Maybe, probably not. But yeah, so I feel like that was something to bring up that was very important. And then Christopher Peterson talked about how um, what the story is doing in Attack on Titan is giving us an understanding of all different sides of the situation. We get to see where Willie Tiber's mind is. We get to see where McGath's mind is. We get to see where the Marley and Titans are. We get to see where Parody is at, what the views of the military police are, Aaron's views, Zeke's views. We get all of this encompassing overarching ideas about the world and the situation that they're in. And it's important, as Christopher Peterson says, to understand all sides of a situation and why people are motivated. Because understanding all sides of the situation and why people are motivated is <clears throat> half the battle towards peace, right? <laughs> and I feel like in the last volume, we started to get to that with Kaya. And the story with Gabby and Falco, where Kaya was like explaining her situation of the story and questioning Gabby and Gabby's questioning Kaya. And this questioning back and forth and coming to an understanding is how we get to peace by understanding each other and where we're coming from. That's how we develop that. And Aaron's just like, well, screw that. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? It's more complicated than that, obviously. But I, if I'm judging Aaron critically, it's because I love him. And because I want the best for him. Right? At least, oh God, it's just such a messed up thing. This whole situation, the whole series is messed up. But it generates some really fun discussions, right? So what can we do? But I do want to give a very quick shout out over to Patreon uh, for our philanthropy tier, for helping me to buy the manga as I'm gearing up for the final installments of the anime. You all have helped me buy the manga that we are reviewing today and supporting the official release from the creators. So I greatly appreciate it. So thank you very much to As You Got Snow Bitches, to Trails, to Zachiel, to Matthew Palfinier, to Goob, to Nameless Monster, to Anna, to Translucent Men, to Sunspots, to Shimoyama, to Eric, to Kiri, to Be Happy, to Alex Cornejo, to Anime Annie, to Tyrone Tyrone, to Dana, and to Edgar. Thank you all so much for helping me and supporting me, along with all of Patreon and YouTube subscribers. I really appreciate it. All of my love. So let's get started this because I, I have some things I want to talk about and get out of the way right now. My mind's in the gutter and you'll have to excuse me, but it just needs to be said, right? So we're going to look at this here in three, two, one. Okay. First off, I like that in volume 27, Isayama was like, oh, you want some Aaron fan service? Here's a shirtless Aaron and Aaron and behind bars and doing all this on the cover and all that. In this cover... <laughs> I, we were talking about this in the Discord. We were talking about this in the Discord because we were saying that, you know, Isayama does not actually give us a lot of female fan service, which is nice. As a female reader who has been used to objectified, sexualized women across the board in many an anime and animated series, I'm very happy that Isayama doesn't go that route. Ironically enough, the only female fan service that we actually get is in the OVAs, which are not Isayama, so that's, that should say something. But Isayama has a tendency to do a lot of male fan service, which... I'm fine with, let's put the shoe on the other foot for once, but I'm gonna draw the line at this cover because Aaron sexily behind bars last volume was fine. It's not that Zeke shirtless is the problem on this cover. It's not. 
but this looks like a freaking BL. Not the skeleton, not the titan in the corner, but you have Levi like a freaking dominatrix stalking towards Zeke. And then it's not Zeke shirtless is the problem. And you all, I know my mind's in the gutter. You're gonna have to excuse me, but his pants. What is up with his pants? Why are they undone? Why is there a happy trail? Why are we about to see Zeke's dick? I don't want this. I looked at the cover and I was like, oh, Zeke's like shirtless. And then like my eyes glanced down for a hot second. I was like, what is this Isayama? I mean, I guess they didn't want to show Zeke nude because he's there, but, 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 but you didn't have to, you could have drawn him from the waist up. You, you could have, you didn't have to have a full body shot. You did. You didn't do a full body shot with Aaron in the last volume. You could have had Zeke half body too, but I don't want to imagine Zeke with a happy trail and with his penis right there. I don't, uh, <sighs> <laughs> I love Asaya's voice. I love um, Kayasu's voice, but I'm like, I don't, I didn't want to imagine. I've never been attracted to Zeke. And I usually like blondes with blue eyes, so you would think I would be, but Zeke has always been kind of like a, a character for me. He's too goofy and he's too problematic, so I'm like, nope, you're a red flag. Absolutely not. And he wants to like euthanize people, so I'm like, that's kind of a big turnoff for me. So I'm like, nah, but... I, nope. <laughs> I was like, this is turned into a BL real quick. I guess the people that are shipping Levi and Zeke were like, yes, please, Isayama. Thank you. I guess they were happy with this. See, look, see the table of contents. You could have just had Zeke. He looks really upset because Levi has kicked his ass. Could have had this. Children of the forest. Oh my God, we're starting out with children of the forest. Yes, yes, please ignorance, savagery, and soul salvation. Oh my God, we're getting all of that in this volume? <gasps> oh shit, we're getting all of that in this volume? Ah! Okay, okay, no big deal, it's fine. Those are just three amazing chapters. <laughs> three amazing episodes in one, it's fine. Oh, we get to hit Phlox trickster face. I, mm, mm. I do like that we have the Yeager brothers back to back. Fun times. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we have everybody on the cover here. Gang's all here. They're all the dead people are out. It's just live people here. Fun times. And we're back to this. Children of the forest. Oh, I can't believe we're already here. I cannot believe we're already here. Yep. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Okay. So everybody has disappeared. Mm-hmm. That's bad news for us. They're the Jaegerists. The anti-military organization. Why not? Do we know their goal? They want to have Aaron and Zeke put into contact with one another. Yep, and they assassinated the commander-in-chief, and it only shows their resolve. How are they able to organize themselves in a small amount of time? I don't think it's been a small amount of time, oddly enough. I think it's been happening for a while. They believe in Aaron, who in turn believes in Zeke. Yep. And then Hanji explaining everything. Yep, the final trigger was the military's plan to transfer the founding titan from Aaron to another soldier without notifying us in the Survey Corps. I love that Hanji, like, brings it back around being like, wow, if you guys hadn't been some shady bitches, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I like that Hanji, like, just snaps it around and everybody's quiet. And Niall says, we knew what was going to happen if we told you. And, and Mika says, like, but bitch, still, right? Many of the, many of the Igris are from the Survey Corps. And Haji taking responsibility, but to resign would be the most irresponsible thing I could do right now. So we got to take care of this situation until then. Oh. And then that's when, the, I like the Osmo Beta woman's just sitting there like listening to all of this go down and being like, geez, this is a shit show, isn't it? But yeah, I, I like that Hanji's like, look, I'll accept any punishment, but not right now. We gotta get through this first, right? And then Pixis and Hitch and all of them show up. Levi and 30 others watching over Zeke are showing are confined, but they're not letting anybody know where he is, right? Oh, and Armin, as someone with the power of the Titans, your defenses must be stronger than ever. The only one that can lead us is you, Pixis. And then Pixis says, let's surrender. They got us beat. And Pixis is like, well, what else do we want to do? Uh, this is interesting. 
Because he's like, there's nothing we can do about the enemies inside the military. Torturing them's pointless. He's like, no, we lost because of all this shady stuff that's been going down. They're like, are you just going to bow to him? And Pixis is like, I knew Zackley for a long time. And I like that Pixis is like, look, Zackley is fine with this with this ends. You know, he's fine with this mean to an end. He was probably going to go out in a blaze of glory anyway. He would have been one of this. We're fine. The four who died wouldn't have wanted their funerals to come at the cost of Eldia's fall. And Pixis is like, we're not submitting. We're going to negotiate with Zeke's location on the table. We'll continue to watch over the earth-shaking experiments like we have. And we're going to stake Eldia's survival. But we're not going to discuss murder of uh, their murder of the top dog. That's the price we pay to prevent the deaths of hundreds, if not thousands. It's a cheap one to pay. Yeah, I love Pixis. Being like, in this moment, going back to Pixis's roots, being true to his character, and saying, look, if we gotta make a deal with the devil and it saves us all, fine, but otherwise we're gonna implode and it's gonna cause chaos. And Pixis is like, I'm not here for that. So let's negotiate and go from there. And he's like, now let's get to work. Mm. I like Pixis being with the Osmobito woman. I wish it would have worked out for them, but sadly, it does not. And then Mikasa... She's like, if anything happens, Mika says also really tall or that woman is really short. She says, escape to our ship if anything happens. And she's like, I'm an Eldian. I would be a nuisance to you all. And then she says, I want to watch over the island that birthed and raised me. And I like the Osmo Beetle woman is like, um, that's a terrible idea, but okay. <laughs> you want to live on this podunk island? Sure. Fine. Yep. Would you have without, would you have come here without our resources? You don't care who leads as long as you get the earth shaking that you want. Yeah, Mika says no fool. And she, I like that the Osmo Beetle woman is like literally draping herself over Mikasa as she's like confessing all of this. And she's saying our debts will bring Osmo Beetle to their final ruin. And I like that Mikasa, Mikasa's face right there is very much like Aaron's. Where she's just like, I'm not going to be a part of this. No, thank you. That is one thing I do like about Aaron's character is he doesn't take any bullshit off of anybody. And Mikasa kind of follows suit with that. And she's like, we're, we're wretched penny-pinching vixens, but we've not lost our pride as a clan. I want to protect you. So there is that sense of family there that she talks about being like, look, this is we are greedy bastards, but you are our blood and we're not going to betray that. We're family, which is going to connect back to Mikasa wanting to protect Aaron because they're family, you know. And so they're like, what are we going to do? We don't know if Aaron did it yet. But we're already suspected of being Jaegerists. Whose side? I like that Connie's still on this. Whose side are we on? And Hanji's like, let's just stop and think about things. And John says, are you having no problems trusting Aaron and Zeke? And Hanji's like, no, that's no good. No matter how well Zeke and Yelena's plans go, they knew they'd be better. They'd never be free of suspicion. So they needed this insurance policy and now it's paying off. And so Hanji's like, this isn't just about winning flock over. We have to assume that there's a lot of other contingencies we don't even know about, right? I like Hanji being like, I hope this is just wild speculation. Oh, Hanji. Yep, the restaurants. Yeah, something the Marleyan Marleyan uh, prisoners of war saw. It doesn't add up. Yeah, so they're gonna they're gonna point together the wine. Yep, and then that's when that's when they all show up. The family for a nice family dinner at a family restaurant. What could happen? Oh my God. And Mia, oh man, and all the family. And Kaya's like, just stand up tall. She says, so stand up tall. Soldiers use this place a lot too. And then I like that Falco's like, look, there's a Marley and we know this will be great. Oh my God. It's all going down. Mm -hmm. Nicolo's the Marley and who invited us here. Oh, big sis was Mr. Blouse's daughter and a soldier. I think they were in love. So Kaya's, Kaya spreads all the rumors about, about them being in love. Uh-huh. And of course, Gabby freaks out because 
Gabby knows from Reiner, her cousin, that he's the son of a Marleyan and knows just how that turned out between him and his mom, her aunt. So she's like, oh, well, it couldn't be possible. And that's when Falco's like, hmm, this all seems weird, but we're also getting really good food, so we're not going to turn it down. And then they're like, Survey Corps is here. And they wanted to ask them questions. Oh, my God, I can't believe this is all going down. I can't believe this is happening right now. And Niccolo is like, don't drink the wine. Oh, my God, that's so freaking good. Oh, yep, yep, don't overreact. And that's why, that's when Niccolo has the whole thing about wasting on aliens. The, the manga makes it very apparent that the wine is the problem. The anime leads you to believe that maybe Niccolo is just being like kind of weird. But no, the manga makes it apparent that yes, no, the wine is the problem. Instantly. And then, yeah, Niccolo tries to pass it off. Mm-hmm. So then, yep, yeah, Falco and Gabby run off. They find Niccolo. And they're like, we're honorary Marleyans. And Nicola was like, holy shit, this is really, really bad. Warrior candidates are here. Oh, no. And that's when he finds out that she killed Sasha. And I love that moment because Falco instantly realizes, oh, no, this is not good. And Gabby's like, yes, yep. Oh my God. Oh my God. The way that it's drawn there. And oh my God. Oh, oh shit. That's bad. That's bad. Oh, Isayama. He got hit with the bottle. Oh, and the wine poured into his mouth. Yep. Shit. Because he saved Gabby. Yep. Oh my God. And it was her. Yep. And that's when, that's when it all comes out. Everything there. Oh my God. And then Armin showing up being like, Hey, did we, did we step in on something? What's going on? Oh my God. Yep. Oh my God, not Falco. Oh. And it's like, you don't know what's wine and what's blood in that moment. Yep, she enjoyed my food more than anyone. She saved me from this stupid, worthless war and showed me who I was meant to be, someone who brings happiness through cooking. The woman whose life you took. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't apparent that Niccolo loved her, I mean, that's all the proof we need. Yeah, the way he looked at her and everything. Uh-huh. And then that's when Mr. Browse, the moment that Gabby is like talking about her being a devil, Mr. Browse is like, give me the knife. No. Oh my God. That shot of Mr. Browse standing over Gabby and the way that it's framed. And the mom kind of looks like uh, Lara Tiber, <laughs> to be honest. But the way that it's phrased and the way he holds the knife, just the composition of that. And then Hanji tells him to put down the knife. And that's when he starts the story about her being a hunter. That's how we lived. I knew the day would come when we couldn't keep living that way. So I made Sasha leave the forest. Then the world got bigger and she became a soldier. And she went off to attack other lands, shot people, and got shot herself. And he gives it to the mom. I thought getting her out of the forest would mean something. But the whole world was a colossal forest where it was still kill or be killed. She got killed because she wandered too long in the forest. We've got to keep children out of the forest at the very least. Or the same thing is going to happen again and again. To shoulder the sins of hatred in the past. That's our burden. The adults. Let Ben go. Oh my God. Yes. Oh. Or Mr. Browse. MVP dad of the year. Where he's just like, look, nothing's going to change if we keep bringing these kids into this. 
And then that's when Kaya's gonna go after her. Don't you hate me? She was my sister. And I thought you were my friend. Because Kaya's a kid. But I, li I like Mikas as the one to stop her, right? And Kaya's just a kid, but it's just that, that cycle. And granted, I'm glad that later we know that, that Maya and, or Kaya and Gabby break the cycle together. But yeah, in that moment, it's just you're so caught up in emotions that you act without thinking. And I like that Mr. Browse grabs her because he's the adult. That's what should happen, right? And then, yeah, some of that wine got in, but it's probably too late. And that's when we find out about the spinal fluid. Yep, there we go. Hanji's like, oh shit, oh no. Ignorance, oh my God. Yep, what do you mean? Oh my God, Jean's face. Jean's face is so intense there. Oh my God, I don't have proof. But they've been packed full of wine from the very start. Yep, it was like a whole pack, like more than they would need. So of course it was suspicious. At Yelena. And Anya Kapan's like, I don't love me with her. I ain't with crazy. And so it's not like anyone saw it happening and can't confirm. And plus the fact if it's a gas versus a liquid could, could have a big effect too. If it's just in tiny doses in the liquid, you might not notice. When you get drunk, your senses are dulled anyway. The alcohol makes your senses kind of messed with to begin with. So you could be acting crazy and not even realize it. Yeah, as long as you don't show symptoms. They're like, yeah, it's you don't know, whereas a gas is a different concentration. So it's very likely, right? There's no proof, but we know how it's been used in the past. Why would I need to get higher ups to drink the suspicious wine? Nothing else makes sense to me. Yeah, Niccolo figured it all out. Yep. Oh, I don't, I'm sure I don't have long to live. But why was I trying to kill a child? What's wrong with me? Yeah, exactly. But we don't know what's gonna become of poor Falco. All Falco did was try to protect Gabby. That was it. That's all he did. Now he's, you know. But it's what Reiner told him to do this whole time. And what he wanted to do, so. Oh my God. Don't touch your faces or your mouths. Oh my God. And that's when he runs in the flock. Oh man, uh-huh. I can't believe this is happening now. Oh my God. Oh my God. And so then why'd you protect me? And I like it because it's like, I didn't have a reason. Yep. But Falco didn't. And I like the Armin's like, we're not killing. And I love the Armin's like, I don't want to kill you. All you ever talk about is killing, killing and killing. You remind me of someone. Oh my God. Yep. And speak of the devil. There he is. Oh my God. Aaron just shows up with his hand bleeding all the time. He's like, Hey, what's up? Like that just, just cuts his hand right off the bat. You remind me of someone. All you do is talk about killing others. Yeah. Similarities, right? I hate how Aaron looks there. I hate how Aaron looks because Aaron has to put on the act here of getting Armin and Mika said to not come with him. I hate it. And he's doing, I, I like John's like fuzzy hair there as they're trying to like bathe Falco. And then here's the Agaris flock. Mm -hmm. You're going to take us to him. And we declined it. We're not negotiating. Aaron said we weren't negotiating. Yep. Mm hmm. And I like Hanji's like, you're delusional. I like Hanji calls Flock delusional. It's great. It's great. And so then, yeah. Uh-huh. And then did Yelena put you up to this? And I like Hanji's like, look, why are we fighting one another? And then tells him all this. Oh my God. Yes. I'm, I'm ready for the Flock face. I'm ready for it. Oh, finished. Oh, I love this. The MPs will just look even stupider. Oh. 
We never told you the military brigade drank the wine. How'd you know? Oh, man! No, the anime did it better! Oh, man! The uh-huh! Keep it down. This is a family restaurant. Oh, my God! No! Okay. Mappa, I, as good as that panel is where he's like, shh, keep it down. As good as that panel is, the anime made it so much more, like, so much more memeable. Oh, my God. Ah, oh, no. That's great, but the anime Mappa knocked it out of the park with that one. And then, okay. And then it's just Aaron with <laughs> pseudo Aaron Gabby and Armin and Mikasa. Oh my god, this. And the like the blood dripping on the table. I <laughs> like that Armin's like, you came here with flock? <laughs> like Armin's like, really? You besties with that guy? Gabby. I wanted a quiet chat. Conflict is not necessary to solve Eldia's problems. Oh my god. Yep, we're just relocating them. And Armin's like, well, we wanted to talk to you. We want to know what you were thinking and why did you decide to attack Marley on your own? Have Zeke and Yelena really won you over to their side? Uh-huh. <laughs> And Aaron doesn't give an answer to that, but instead says, I'm free. Whatever I do, whatever I choose, I do it out of my own free will. Meaning that he's like, I'm not influenced by anybody at this point except myself. And they're like, okay. You met with Yelena in secret the night the railway opened. Has this been all you wanted? And then Mikasa tells him he's being controlled. And, oh, God, Aaron looks so sad at her that in that moment. Aaron would have never involved civilians and children, even if they lived in an enemy state. You cared and thought more about us than anyone. You saved me from the kidnappers because you're a kind person, right? The way she phrased that, she said, because you're a kind person, not because you cared about me. Oof. And he said, I said, keep your hands off the table. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I learned Zeke knows more than Marley does. And then Aaron asks Armin if he's still going to see Annie. Did you choose to do that or is that Bertolt? And I, that part makes me a little bit mad because I'm like, Aaron, you know that it's not Bertolt. You know that Armin, or maybe he doesn't. Aaron is so oblivious to romance Maybe he doesn't know, right? Aaron has no clue how romance works. So I don't think Aaron understood at the time that Armin had interest in Annie. He, that thought never crossed his mind. Instead, he tries to use all this junk and saying that you become a part of Bertolt. I feel like Aaron's trying to justify, but it's like, if you get on to Armin for having Bertolt in him, then are you truly free because you have Grisha inside of you? Is that really true, you know? He says, you weren't soft like this before. You never backed the enemy. Your judgment always led us to an answer. But now all you can say is, let's talk. You're useless. But that's not true. That, that, oh, that so, that pisses me off so much because it's like, he says, Bertolt's gotten into your brain and you're the one being controlled. But I'm like, Aaron, no. Armin just, Aaron is like a damn hillbilly that got a hold of nuclear weapons. He's, Aaron's like this uneducated hillbilly who's just, just going off of emotion. And I'm like, you can learn and grow as a human being. Ah, it's okay to change your mind and grow, damn it. Oh my God, no. There's nothing further removed from freedom than ignorance. But that's, that's the thing. Armin isn't ignorant. He's been learning about things. He's like, I learned about Ac the Ackermans there too. The reason that you're strong. So the Marley scholars, all, for all their efforts, the Marley scholars barely know anything about the Titans, but they discovered there was an accidental byproduct of Eldia's experiments with the subject of Ymir, a bloodline that could partially manifest strength of a Titan while in human form. Oh, okay. Well, they were designed to protect the Eldian king. So when the Ackermans sense the presence of a host, traits are inherent in the blood will activate. You only cling to me because it's your instincts. 
When you were facing of death, you obeyed my order to fight. Ugh. And so I, but that, Aaron, come on now. It was not a mistake. It was because of you that I was able to become strong. They often suffer from sudden headaches. They say this happens out of the true self trying to resist being forced to protect the host. And so Aaron tries to say that like the real Mika said disappeared in the cabin and you're just faithful to him because of your blood. And Armin's like, and Aaron's like, you're the only reason that you're trying to, st to talk with the enemy is because of Bertolt. And Armin's like, that's bullshit too. He's like, you're all slaves. Oh, and Armin, I hate anyone who isn't free. And I'm like, and Armin's like, that's stupid. I, the, oh my God. Yeah, looking at her made me so angry. Ever since I was a kid, I've always hated you. Oh, on uh, and Armin. I like that Gabby's just here. Gabby's just here being like, well, I don't understand any of this, but okay. And Armin just being so mad because he's like, do you realize how much? Like, Megas's face there is so horrifying. Like, the way she looks at him. I'm like, Aaron. Like, it makes me want to cry. I'm like, Aaron, why are you doing this? It... If you know that Mikas is not really like that because of her blood, and you know Armin's not really being influenced by Berthold, and you're just trying to distance him, I'm like, uh, why? And uh, Because I'm like, he can't expect to come back to them at the end of all this. He, I'm like, I'm like, are you just going to kill yourself to try to keep them safe, but you don't realize that what you're doing is going to kill them as well? I'm like, I, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I'm like, you have not hated her, you liar. You just know you're about to become a monster and you want them to hate you. And you don't understand why they don't. And then, yeah, and she stops him. And she, but she loves him. That's why she protected him. Oh my God, and Armin. I'm like... The thing about Armin, like, being soft around the enemy, that pisses me off so much. Because I'm like, no, Armin has always been somebody to logically think about things. And yeah, Armin is just like Bertolt in the fact they both had instances where they tried to convince the enemy otherwise. But Armin's grown since then as a person. And I feel like Aaron hasn't necessarily grown like Armin has. He's just doubled down on his resolve. And, oh, this whole this chapter makes me sick makes me so mad because I'm like I on the one hand if Aaron really does believe that Armin and Mikasa are the way that they are because of this I'm like you're wrong and you're the ignorant one and if he's doing this just to distance them from him it's still stupid <laughs> because at the end of the day I'm like I know Aaron doesn't believe that anyone should love him but at the end of the day, they still love you, damn it. That's why they're going after you, even after you were a complete asshole to them, you know? Oh, you couldn't win. It would never be a fair fight. And Aaron stops when Mika says, Aaron stops when Mika starts crying and says to stop. If I, if you told me where Zeke was, there'd be no need for us to fight. The brat who killed Sasha, too. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I love Armin in this moment, though. He's like, is that what you wanted to say? Is this the freedom you wanted? The freedom to hurt Mikasa? You're a slave, too. And your master's a worthless bastard. Yeah, I, I love that Armin gets him in that moment, though, because he's like, you are no less a slave than any of us. You just you're just in constant denial of the fact that you are. Everyone's a slave to something. Oh, oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. I hate it so much. Because even if it was even if it was Aaron, even if it was Aaron trying to distance himself from them, 
and make them not love him and make them hate him for what he's about to do. Even if that was the case, he should one, he's ignorant himself because he should know that they love him unconditionally and they're still going to try to go after him even when he's a bastard, right? Ugh. Oh, this chapter is what made me really not like Aaron, and I'm, like, about to cry. Ugh. I hate it. It's like, Aaron, you are such a fool. Such a fool. Anyway, now we're going to go back to Zeke. <laughs> because Zeke's like, oh, well, what ended up happening here? Oh, my God. And, of course, Levi doesn't drink wine because that's not his, that's not his forte. Someone have eat Aaron by our hands. And Levi's like, I've saved him time and time again. And so many of my comrades have died. I did it because I believed he was the best hope for humanity's survival. Levi's like, I kept you alive because I thought you would save us. And this is where that belief got me. It was one big, awful joke. Was it this farce waiting us? I'm not laughing. Mm-hmm. If anyone would be speed it to a titan, it's that piece of shit. <laughs> yes. We'll transfer Zeke's beast. Turn them into a titan and feed Zeke to him. And then if a story is prepared like she says she is, we'll feed the titan to her next. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they don't know if Birth's going to have any complications because it's parody. Yeah, I, uh I see, that's the thing, too. I guess you could, I guess Aaron could argue that Levi was protecting him all this time because, but he wasn't, he wasn't royal blood. So, nope, that's not it. I, you know, I don't think that's the case because Levi has been trying to kill. Uh, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah, the, the whole thing about, um... The, the found, oh, I guess it's the founder is what it is. I guess you could argue that Levi, but here's, this is what goes against Aaron's thoughts too about the whole Ackerman bloodline and then protecting the king. Levi's beat the shit out of Aaron, <laughs> like over and over again. And if that was the case and Levi, you know, he's beat the shit out of Aaron even after he inherited the founders. So no, that's not the case. No, no. Um, Levi imprinted upon Aaron, um, Erwin, who is not, did not have the founder in his blood. So no, he was not protecting the bloodline. So no, that's bullshit. So yeah, and the whole thing with Bertolt, Aaron doesn't understand how human romance works. So he doesn't know that Armin's been liking Annie this whole time, even before he ate Bertolt. That was just coincidence. So I just, girl. Yep. Now I don't think, you know, Levi's not the best strategist here, so I don't agree with his plans, but I do agree that he's like, let's just get rid of Zeke. And, and honestly, if they just got rid of Zeke, this would have all been over. But what can we do? The one I've read seven times. Yep, I'll get distracted when I've read it seven times. Hmm. Sure thing, box. I love that Levi's like, I'm going to kill him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care anymore. No. The bearded bastard was really our enemy all along. This has been a long time coming. Or when I can fulfill the vow I made to you that day. Your deaths meant something, but I can prove it. And then he runs off. Yeah, I like these stretches there, and then he runs off. Oh my god. And Levi's like, my day just went from bad to worse. <laughs> All the time. All the time, Levi. Oh my god. I, I do think that it's something that Levi is a slave to something, and what Levi is a slave to is the vow that he made Erwin. Levi is a slave to that promise that he made him to prove that it wasn't just for nothing. Oh my God. Oh. Shit, all of that. Oh, all of their faces like erupting and Levi being like, son of a bitch. Levi kind of looks a little bit like Isayama, so I wonder if that's intentional. Oh my God. That image. Shit. Well, crap. 
Yep, my body went numb for a minute. Yeah, there's a proximity to it. Uh-huh. And the proximity, uh-huh. Yep, yep. Savagery. The proximity, yeah, it's like when they were on the plane and they all passed that and they all like froze. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh my God, Zeke. Oh, poor Falco. Oh man, damn. You're a caring leader. Your soldiers didn't do anything wrong. You wouldn't slice them to pieces over that, would you? Oh, that's cruel, Zeke. And it's the wine because Levi doesn't drink any. Yep. We have tea. He's like, Captain, what a pain. Uh-huh. And he, he, God. Yeah, where he's like, damn it! Yeah, Levi's like, oh, he's like, I should have realized. There was no sign of it. No one froze up. Or was that a lie? We don't know. They don't move like normal titans as that Zeke's doing too. Damn it. Varus. Oh my God, Levi. Oh. Are you still in there, all of you? Oh my God. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Levi. Levi. Oh. We never did learn to trust one another. But I can't blame you. The world I've seen was too different from what you've all seen. Oh my God. The raid of Liberio has given you false hope. The world's forces are going to gather here. You have no idea what that means. But the thing about it is, the thing that is so mad about this, and I know why Zeke is doing, you know, this whole soul salvation, which we're going to get in this volume, his whole chapter. It's like, again, in order to have peace, in order to do what Armin wants to do, you have to have two sides come to the table that mutually want to know about each other. And that happened with Uri and Kinney, and that's why the miracle could happen, right? So, and with Anyan and Armin and them, you have sides, and with Ozma Beatos and them, you have sides that want to have a mutual, they have benefit to knowing and understanding each other. Zeke, Zeke and Aaron in these cases, both Zeke and both Aaron have been like, we're not interested in understanding you. We're not interested in figuring something out. No. Like, neither of them are interested, so you can't have the, the miracle happen because one of the sides is not on it, right? Oh, you thought you had ta strength, time, and choices, and it was those foolish beliefs that were your downfall. It's not as if you could ever understand, even if I'd shared my true intentions with all of you. Aaron, you and I are the only ones who understand. And I think that is the one similarity is that both Le both Zeke and Aaron believe that nobody would understand what they're trying to do. The only problem is Zeke thinks him and Aaron are on the same side, but the reality is they are not on the same side. Zeke and Aaron, the only thing they share in common is they don't think anybody else would understand their agenda, right? <laughs> God. Not again. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh my God. Oh my God, Levi. Oh. Oh. Nope. Oh my God. And throwing chunks. Where'd the other Titans go? Where'd your adorable men go? The poor things. Oh, and Levi's like, no, no. Because here's the thing. Like, I, again, I have less sympathy towards Zeke because Aaron at least, well, I don't think he would, he wouldn't do something like Zeke, right? He wouldn't taunt like Zeke does, right? Although he's pretty cruel. Here's the thing. Aaron, Aaron and Zeke's taunts are very different. Zeke's taunts are very boisterous and very much like, oh, poor pitiful souls. Aaron's are like cold and heartless, like just jabbing you, right? You desperate bearded bastard. All you had to do was sit back and read. I, that line always got me. Yes. 
you think I wouldn't be able to kill my comrades just because you turned them into titans? You wouldn't know how many friends we've had to kill. Oh my god, and the thunder spears. Oh my god. Ah! Yep. Yep. Beardy. You reeking, filthy, ugly piece of shit. Oh my god. I'm not gonna kill you, not yet. And the thing about it is, that is also a mistake. Because if you didn't want this to happen, then you probably should have just killed Zeke. But there was nobody else except Levi to take him, so what do we do? So meanwhile, Pixis is going on through everything and going through... Oh, it's no, it's not Pixis, it's Instructor Shaddis. Oh, man, I... Oh, this is so sad because Shaddis is like... Shadis is like the Gen X trying to talk to the Gen Z kids. It's not working out. And they're talking about the Jaegerists. Oh, Shadis' face down there in the corner. Oh, Shadis. And of course, and to add insult to injury, it's they're talking about Aaron leading them, who is Grisha's son. And Keith is like, well, I was in love with Aaron's mom. I hope that doesn't count for anything. Oh my god. Oh. It really is like a Gen X trying to talk to a Gen Z, though. Poor Keith. And that's when the Jaegerists show up. And that's when they have them beat him up. Oh, man. And he told the cadets, beat this instructor down. And they're all like, oh. Like, we, we just thought he was this old cranky guy, but... Oh, I like that. I like the way that Flock like bumps Keith's like chest and Keith says nothing. And he says these children would be And I like that the way he says that in that moment, they're all like they're all like questioning what to do and Hanji's about to step in and Keith is like, "No, no." I liked it in this moment. Everybody was talking about how there was a chance. Everybody was talking about there was a time where Keith where Hanji had a crush on Keith. And I think this kind of would would go with that because Hanji stands up for Keith and Keith's like, nah, Hanji. And the way he says all these children are no match for me, he gets them to beat him up because he doesn't want Hanji to get involved. He takes he takes the brunt of it. Oh. Poor Hanji. And meanwhile, we have the Browse family. Connie doesn't want to know what to do. Armin doesn't know what to do. Jean's up against the wall. And Aaron's by himself. We were talking about this in Discord. Uh, these stories should all be a cautionary tale. You do not need to be by yourself. Please don't be by yourself. There are other people in this world. Go talk to people. Don't be by yourself. Don't be like Aaron. Mm -mm. And I hate it because in that moment, Aaron doesn't look... Like, again, you know Aaron's not happy with how any of this is going. But Aaron doesn't believe there's any other way. Aaron's lost faith in that. Right? He thinks this is the only way. Meanwhile... I guess this is, <laughs> I guess the cover now makes sense because Levi like shucked Zeke's pants on or whatever and didn't bother to button them because he's like, I'm not going to give you even the courtesy. I want you to stand up and your oh. pants to fall down, basically. Oh my God. And you'll explode oh. if that happens. Oh. You toyed with the lives of my soldiers. I cut off his foot. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh my god. Oh, Levi. You don't need glasses. And then that's it's the glasses of his of Mr. Sa of Mr. Cassaver. Uh-huh. Ooh. Soul salvation. So then we go back to the past, right? Liberio. And so we have Grisha. Honestly, when he's up here saying it's as small as a bird cage compared to the rest of the world and we're never going to be able to leave. There's a lot of Aaron in that moment with Grisha, right? There's a lot of him there. Mhm. Mm and then they and then Zeke experiences the prejudice against him and his family. 
He's like, you're going to, if you can't stand the way the world is, you're going to have to change it. You're going to save everyone. And there is a big difference there because Aaron was always motivated to want to save everyone and to do something. And Zeke was kind of forced to. He didn't really have, he didn't really have any choice in the matter. But you have a special power. Mm -hmm. And so his grandparents are led. Yeah. So you can understand what we're doing for in one day. And so that's when the grandpa starts to teach Zeke about all the people dying. Mm. Do you want to become a warrior and fight for Marley? And that's when he sees Freya there. And so McGath is over there. Man, McGath's been around for a while with them, right? Oh. And see, the sad thing is that Zeke sees the Zeke sees the the dad playing with the kids playing ball and he's like I finished early so can we and then Grisha's like oh well if you finish early then it's time for indoctrination and it's like oh no yep and then Grisha like praises him praises him but then he never he never played with him like like he needed to like a dad should have right and that's when Mr. Krasaver gets him to play ball. Oh. My beast titan isn't too useful in a war, but my job is a researcher of titan science. Yep. You're a natural pitcher. And that's when we see the Grises and all of this. Yep. And that's when they have the argument about how Zeke can do things. And again, it's the parents imposing on their children, which is not what you should do. It's like, it's like, and you know, in, in the real world, Grisha would be like the football star who used to be a football player and his kid was like, well, my kid has to make all-star, all-state team. Otherwise, he won't live up to the family name. Like, it's just that on steroids to a 20,000th degree. And then the way that they look at him when he doesn't meet the goals. Damn. And Kasavar taking pity on him. Oh my God. I do feel bad for Zeke as a child because no kid should have their parents be that way to him and the way that his dad was to Zeke. And the sad thing is Grisha realizes the errors of his ways. He just realizes it all too late. And Grisha's, you know, Zeke's still affected by it. Hmm. I want to know the secret of the Titans because I'm a researcher. That's why I did it. Hmm. Ah. If the legends were true, it started with the founder and Ymir came in contact with something and I want to know what happened. So much I was willing to shorten my lifespan to search through a Titan's memories. But that's why I'm useless. I hate conflict, and all conflict seems ridiculous compared to the mysteries of the world. So I can't be bothered to play with war with the rest of them. We're both decent people. Yeah. I like it. I I like Kasavar's character because he really was just like, I just want to know what the mystery of our people is, and that's kind of why I did it. It's still interesting that he ended up becoming a Titan warrior at all but I guess he was a researcher and I guess the other beast titans were just like and eh, they weren't like there were, one was like a butterfly and they're like not gonna be very helpful <laughs> in war so so his was just fine and then oh my god honestly Aaron's face he gets a lot of looks from his dad he looks a lot like Carla but mm. yep oh my god just awful Faye was killed because of how crazy this world is we have to fight so no one meets her fate again but grandpa said if you didn't go outside the walls and that's when Grisha says what did I do wrong I just wanted to see the airship 
it's like, yeah. And that's when he tells Cassaver. Yep. And that's when he tells him to accuse them and save yourself. Because he came to like this kid. The sad thing is, it's like, you know why Grisha is the way that he is? You know why? The, the series, you know why every character is doing the things that they're doing. Except Aaron. Aaron's the one character that we think we know what Aaron's doing, but it's not. They're still all, even up to now, even up to where I'm at in the anime, there is an air of mystery where not all of the secrets about Aaron have been revealed yet. Not all the cards have been put on the table because they're waiting for the final act to do that. So... Aaron is the only character that's kind of off here with some mystery surrounding him. Everybody else, Isayama gives us like their, their entire character motivations. Everything is laid out. And the problem is, is that we, the audience, can see everything laid out in front of us. And we're like, well, if you did this, this, and this, you wouldn't have these problems. But that's not how this world works. And that's, he's like, your parents have done something awful to you. They used you for their reckless plan. And they put you in danger. They put expectations on you and gave up on you without a single attention to what you want. Which is true. They never loved you. The only thing I hate about that is that I think that what Grisha reveals to Zeke by the end is that he did love him. It's just has ambitions and seeking revenge took precedence over it. And yep, and then we see them being taken away. Yep. That, that's the thing that's going to come back when we get to Memories of the Future is that Grisha did love Zeke, but he made a mistake, right? And so the one thing I don't like about Kasavar is that he tells him that his parents never loved him. I was like, dude, yes, they used him, but they did love him. So, oof, oof. And then that's when he's like, his term is almost over. Mm-hmm. Yep, the founding titan has on the subjects of your mirror. Is the memory stuff really true? It can change the structure of the bodies of the subject of Ymir. If the founding Titan's owner makes use of that power. So they talk about an epidemic that was sweeping the world, killing so many of the population plunged. But one day the disease was eradicated from the Eldian Empire. It's the subjects of Ymir were no longer infected. The king used the power to re redesign the bodies of the subject of Ymir. So that kind of goes back to the Titan science of re-basically the Ackerman bloodline. I'm glad we finally get confirmation in the manga about that. So basically the Ackerman bloodline was kind of just a bloodline designed by, by the founder to like have Titan strength. But I guess the headaches, I guess migraines are the side effect of getting Ackerman bloodlines, right? You'd almost wonder if they wouldn't just do that anyway to all the bloodlines but whatever yep we're part of the founding titans so no matter how where we are how many of us are we can be affected and that's when zeke i like how they draw zeke in his teenage years he looks really good there we can make it to where they no longer have children could they do that and then yep he's like if no more subjects of ymir were born every titan would be gone within a hundred years from now the world wouldn't have to live in fear of the Titans or suffer. If we'd never been born in the first place, we wouldn't have had to suffer. He's like, I had a son. My wife was a Marleyan. I took off my armband and hid the fact that I was an Eldian and lived with her. But I couldn't deceive her and she found out. And I became a warrior because I wanted to kill myself in the grandest way that I could. Hmm. But I tried to find my lost son in you and run from my sins using my Titan power. Oh, how much better it would have been if I had never been born. I hate that nihilism, though. I think that the one thing about Zeke's plan is a lot of people are like, oh, Zeke's plan's awesome. We're just going to euthanize this entire, this entire generation. And I'm like, but yeah, but my thing is, the, the rumbling, the euthanization, it's all just a matter of running from the problem. The problem, Erwin Smith said this back how many volumes ago? 
as long as there are two humans in the world, there will always be conflict. And you can either confront it or run from it. And all Zeke and Aaron's plans are doing is running from the conflict. We'll just destroy the world and leave this little pocket of people and then we won't have any conflict, right? But you're eventually going to have conflict because the people on the island are eventually going to fight. And then what's going to happen then, right? Are you going to kill them too until it's just the four of you left on the planet? Is that it? Is that how you confront the problem? And then Zeke's plan is like, well, we'll just euthanize this entire sect of people that have caused problems to the world and then everything will be fine. But the problem is the people that are left on the planet after you've euthanized this entire subsect of people will eventually fight each other and will eventually have conflict. So is the solution to just keep euthanizing groups of people till there's nothing left? It's running from the problem rather than trying to create understanding confront it and work from it that i mean that's what isiyama is saying so i do get a little miffed when people are like well zeke's plan is really i'm like no zeke's plan is just running from it it's nihilism it's running from it it doesn't solve the overall issue of people arguing and that we need to eventually become adults and confront our problems c civilly and humanely right but ugh. yep i just uh we have to put ourselves out of our misery. I stole nothing. I saved them. And see, honestly, Levi is the perfect example of that, right? Levi is like, if I, because Kenny was like, Kenny told, you know, Kuchel to not, to basically abort Levi and not have him. You know, because this world is too cruel for him to be born in. But he was born anyway. And so it's like, you know, Le Zeke's plan spits in the face of people like Levi, who was born into this world, right? And has the right to live. And that's why Aaron hates Zeke's plan, because he's like, well, I was born into this world too. And so I have a right to live as well and to do as I choose and have freedom. So, yeah. Oh, my God. Cassaver. Shit. And there goes Levi, and there goes the Titan, and everything else. Oh my god. So, we'll get Naked Zeke next volume! Tack on School Cast, something called the Ouija Board. Oh my god, and Marco's doing it too. Oh my, let go and the devil will possess you. Heighten your spirits, the darkness will not take you. Oh my god. I like that Aaron's like, why do we have to do this seance stuff? And Armin's like, you have nothing better to do. And then Aaron's like, do you believe in this? Is anyone with us? Oh. And then I like that Marco's like, I moved it. Oh. What? Tell me what Aaron likes. Oh. What? There's a student. Who? Marco. What does it say? Oh. Mika. Huh. Tell me what Aaron likes. Is it Mikasa? There's a student with that name. What? Oh my god. And there's Marco with the, half the face taken off. What? Oh my god. Whoo! So yeah. Oh my god. Well, this was a volume. <laughs> volume man this was oof children of the forest is like one of my children uh, savagery and children of the forest are two of my favorite episodes but damn that whole conversation with aaron and mikasa and armin is hard and i'm like i i'm still like did aaron just expect them to stay locked up and he was gonna go destroy the world and then when he got back he'd be like hey guys you want to talk about it now I did it to save you. Or did he know they were going to react? The thing about it is, the thing about it is that Aaron doesn't understand is that Armin and Mikasa love him. It's not because of, it's not because of anybody they've ate as the Colossus Titan. It's not because they're an Ackerman. They love Aaron because of the kindness that he did. Mikasa, Mikasa was scared of Aaron in that damn house. But the moment he gave her the scarf afterwards, that's when she fell in love with him. Right? So, and it was because of his kindness. But Aaron believes he's just a monster. 
and he believes that nobody should love him and don't believe that someone will love you just ah! Aaron <laughs> but yeah I feel like Aaron and Zeke's plans are both just running away from the problem they're just they are just putting a giant surgical wound on a open gash and it doesn't solve the problem it's still there so it's just a very clever elaborate way of solving the problem but doesn't really solve the problem you know it's just basically taking out one subsect of humanity doesn't eliminate conflict it's not going to eliminate people's suffering people are going to still keep on suffering until you talk it out and come to the table until you do like mr browse says and get out of the damn forest you're still going to have problems so right back to where i was a year ago watching the anime damn it right back to where i was like a year and a half ago but it's fine i the manga made the panels look so good in this volume the manga was amazing in this volume the artwork was incredible the expressions oh isayama oh my god but yeah so volume 29 is next <laughs> So I'm curious to hear your thoughts down below. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this volume and it's insanity, but volume 29, we're just going to keep chucking right along the closer we get to that anime, right? So I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care. And yes, I will be back very soon with more Attack on Titan.